Hi guys, Jade here. So during my physics degree, something that I really loved was the problem solving aspect. But you know, I never really felt like I was a particularly strong problem solver. So it's a skill I've always wanted to get better at. So I thought today we could do something a bit different and try and train our problem solving skills a bit with three logic brain teasers. They're all related and kind of build upon each other. I would encourage you to try each one yourself before we go through the solution together because that's where you're going to learn the most and also where you're going to have the most fun. But anyway, let's see how far we get and get started. You're visiting an island and on this island there are only two types of people. Knights, who always tell the truth, and knaves, who always lie. You come across two islanders, Billy and Bob. You ask Billy, is Bob a knave? Instead of telling you the answer, he whispers it to Bob. This is weird and even a bit annoying, but hey, you're the visitor, so you just go with it. So you ask Bob, did Billy whisper the answer yes? And Bob replies, no. So which of the following options must be true? One, Billy is a knight. Two, Billy is a knave. Three, Bob is a knight. And four, Bob is a knave. If you want to try and solve this for yourself first, this would be a good time to pause the video. How did you go? So the first thing I would do is consider all the possibilities. There are really only four. Both Billy and Bob are knights. Both Billy and Bob are knaves. Billy is a knight and Bob is a knave. And then Billy is a knave and Bob is a knight. So let's test out the first situation in which both Billy and Bob are knights. So when you ask Billy, is Bob a knave, Billy knows that Bob is a knight, and because knights always tell the truth, Billy would say no. So then when you ask Bob, did Billy whisper the answer yes, because Bob is also a knight and he never lies, he would say no. So the scenario in which both Billy and Bob are knights is perfectly plausible. Okay, so now let's try the second scenario, that both Billy and Bob are knaves. So when you ask Billy, is Bob a knave? The truth is that Bob is a knave. So because Billy is also a knave and always lies, he would say no. So then when you ask Bob, did Billy whisper the answer yes, Bob, who always lies, would say yes. So then this scenario isn't consistent with what happens because Bob answered no. Okay, so let's consider a third scenario, that Billy is a knight and Bob is a knave. When you ask Billy, is Bob a knave? The truth is that Bob is a knave, so Billy, being a knight, would say yes. So when you ask Bob, did Billy whisper the answer yes, Bob, being a knave who always lies, would say no. This scenario is consistent with what happened, so it's perfectly plausible that Billy is a knight and Bob is a knave. So now let's try the final scenario, that Billy is a knave and Bob is a knight. You ask Billy, is Bob a knave? And the truth is no. So then Billy, being a knave, says yes. So then when you ask Bob, did Billy whisper the answer yes, Bob, who is a knight, would say yes. So this scenario isn't consistent with what actually happened. So if we look at the two possible scenarios, the thing that they have in common is that Billy is a knight. Therefore, option one, Billy is a knight, must be true. So that was the warm up. This next one is a bit harder, but hey, that just means we'll feel extra smart when we solve it. You come across 11 islanders in a line. While you don't know anything about the first person in line, you know of the remaining islanders, five of them are knights and five of them are knaves. You ask the first person, if I asked you if you were a knight, what would you say? Instead of responding, they whisper their response to the person behind them. Ugh, this again, you think to yourself. You ask the second person in line, was the thing you had just whispered yes? Instead of responding, they whisper their response to the person behind them. You don't know why, but you ask the third person in line, was the thing you had just whispered yes? Instead of responding, they whisper their response to the person behind them. This continues until the last person, who, when asked, was the thing you had just whispered yes? responds, yes. Is the first person in line a knight or a knave? Pause the video now if you would like to try it for yourself. 
So when I first saw this question, I didn't really know where to start. It felt a bit overwhelming because it seems like there's so much that you don't know. You know that there are five knights and five knaves, but you don't know what order they're in. So it's like, how do you even begin to go about answering whether the first guy is a knight or a knave? But instead of getting overwhelmed and focusing on what we don't know, let's try focusing on what we do know and see if we can figure anything else out. So we know that there are five knights and five knaves, and we know that knights always tell the truth and knaves always lie. Now we can't just brute force it like we did in our last example because there's just too many factors. And plus that's not really in the spirit of problem solving. So let's test out a few different ways that knights and knaves might interact and see if we can find any patterns that might help us. So let's take an extreme case and imagine that all of the islanders are knights. So if you ask the first person, if I asked if you were a knight, what would you say? Well, because knights always tell the truth, he would say yes. So then when you asked the second guy, was the thing you had just whispered, yes, he would say yes as well. If you asked the third guy, he would also say yes. This would continue until the 11th guy, who, when you ask, was the thing you were just whispered, yes, would reply yes. So it seems like knights always propagate the same answer. This is a pattern, even if it's quite simple and boring. Knights always propagate the same answer. Now let's take the other extreme and imagine that all 11 islanders are knaves. So when you ask the first guy, if I asked if you were a knight, what would you say? Well, if you straight up asked him, are you a knight? He would say yes, because knaves always lie. So when you ask him, if I asked if you were a knight, what would you say? Well, the truth is that he would say yes, and because knaves always lie, he says no. So then when you ask the next guy, was the thing you had just whispered yes, because he's a knave and knaves always lie, he answers yes. Then when you ask the third guy, he lies and says no. Are you seeing the pattern? When we ask the fourth guy, he lies and says yes. So it seems like the pattern is that knaves flip the answer between yes and no. So now that we know we have five knights, we know that the answer propagates five times. And because we have five knaves, we know that the answer flips five times. The order in which this happens really doesn't matter. So then let's imagine that the first guy is a knight. So when you ask him, if I asked if you were a knight, what would you say? He would say yes. So if we propagate that answer five times, then if the remaining five islanders are knaves, they flip the answer five times. So then the final guy would say no. So then the first guy isn't a knight. From this alone, we can already figure out that he's a knave, but let's just test it out anyway to be sure. So if the first guy were a knave, when you ask him, if I asked if you were a knight, what would you say? He would say no. So if we propagate this answer five times and then flip it five times, we end up with the 11th guy saying yes. Therefore, the first person in line is a knave. Okay, we're up to the last one. This one is really fun, so I urge you to try it yourself before we solve it together. So you're trying to get the hell off this godforsaken island when you run into another group of 10 islanders. You don't make the same mistake of asking any questions, but before you can get away, the first one says, at least one of us is a knave. Then the second one says, at least two of us are knaves. Then the third one says, at least three of us are knaves. The pattern continues until the 10th one says, at least 10 of us are knaves. How many of them are knaves? Pause the video here to try it for yourself. So the first thing that immediately grabs my attention here is the very last statement, at least 10 of us are knaves. Think about this. If at least 10 of them were knaves, that would mean they were all knaves. But then that would make this statement true. But we know that knaves always lie. So if this statement were true, that would mean that this last guy here is a knight, which would make the statement not true. So then we know for sure that this guy is a knave. So then if we go to the first guy who says, at least one of us is a knave, well, we know for sure that this guy over here is a knave. So that means that this guy here is telling the truth. So he must be a knight. Now let's go to guy number nine who says at least nine of us are knaves. We know for sure that of the 10, one of them is definitely a knight. So then the remaining nine could be knaves, 
But that would make this statement true, which would make him a knight. But if he's a knight, then there would only be eight knaves. And because knights can't lie, he must be a knave. So then when we go to the second guy in line, who says at least two of us are knaves, we know he's telling the truth because guy nine and guy ten are both knaves. So he must be a knight. This pattern continues all the way until the middle. And because there's ten islanders in total, we know that there must be five knights and five knaves. So that's our three riddles, guys. I hope you had as much fun solving them as I did. Like anything, getting better at solving problems just takes practice. So if you would like to have a go at solving some similar riddles, brilliant.org is a great website where you'll find loads of similar stuff. It's an interactive learning website and actually I got the riddles in this video from their course on logic. You'll find plenty more like them in there, as well as this course on the joy of problem solving, which I'm doing right now. They also have loads of other courses, mainly on math, physics, and computer science. And something I've recently discovered are these problems of the week, which you can discuss with other users. The first 200 people to sign up using this link will get a 20% discount. Just go to brilliant.org slash up and Adam. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching guys. So this video was a bit different to my regular kind of videos and that's because my regular videos take me about two weeks to make because I do a lot of research and take a lot of time to do the animations and these kinds of videos don't take me that long because um, there's not really that much research that goes into them because it's solving problems and that's cool because it means I can upload more frequently so you don't have to wait so long in between videos. So let me know if you would like to see more of this kind of problem solving style video. Let me know in the comments and by liking the video. If the video gets to a thousand likes in the first two days, then that'll be a pretty strong indication to me that you guys like this kind of video and share them with your friends as well. Um, yeah, that's it from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.